Welcome to this walkthrough of the Agent Identity Service, powered by Agency, where you can create and manage secure identities for your AI agents and MCP servers, all in one place. In this end-to-end -end demo video, we'll show how to connect to a third-party identity provider, register some existing sample agentic services, and use these sample services to show how to integrate existing applications with the agentic identity service, and benefits that this can bring. To get started, let's get set up with the Agent Identity Service by connecting to a third-party identity provider. First, we sign into our Agent Identity Service account using Google, and we'll select the demo tenant that will be used for this demo. This brings us to the Agent Identity Service dashboard, with quick links to verify identity badges and to create badges and policies for our agentic services. Before we can create agentic services, we need to connect to a third-party identity provider. Clicking Settings in the menu on the left-hand side brings us to the Settings page, where we can see the option to connect to a third-party IDP, including Duo, Okta, Orion Agency, and clicking the link to the documentation provides step-by-step -step instructions on the steps needed. In this demo, we'll set up and connect to Duo as our IDP. Selecting Duo in the Agent Identity Service IDP connection form, we can see that we need to provide the hostname, integration key, and a secret key. To generate these, you can create a free trial account on the Duo website. As we already have an account, we can log in and follow the steps in the Duo Admin API documentation to create a new application. First, we click Add Application, and then search for Admin API and click Add. The application is pre-populated with the necessary settings, except for the permissions which we need to set as described in the documentation. Saving these changes updates the application, and we can now copy the hostname, integration key, and secret key to the Agent Identity Service IDP connection form and click Save. Now that we have connected to the IDP, let's look at how to register some sample agentic services that we will be running locally. We have a sample scenario that we will use for this demo, with an OASF agent, an A2A agent, and an MCP server in a simple financial assistance setup. Each of these agentic services can be registered and provided with an identity badge, which can be used to verify the identity of the agentic service when it interacts with other services. Since the process for each type of agentic service is different, we will look at each one in turn. First, let's register the OASF agent. In the Agentic Services section of the Agent Identity Service, click Add Agentic Service. The documentation provides a step-by-step -step guide for registering an agentic service, including both services that can be accessed on the internet and those that are running on localhost and in development deployments and so are not accessible. In the Agentic Identity Service UI, we select the OASF service type and provide it with the name and a description of the financial assistant agent. Then click Next and then Save. This creates an identity for the OASF agentic service, as highlighted here, powered by the IDP that we connected previously and an API key that will be used later. To create the badge for an OASF service, we need to upload the OASF spec file, which then creates the badge with the contents of the OASF file. We can see the different formats of the badge, including the credentials, JOSE, and claims via the UI. Navigating back to the agentic services section, we can see the OASF service that we just created. Next, let's register the A2A agent. This time we click Add Agentic Service in the top right of the screen and select the A2A service type. You provide a name and description for the currency exchange agent, and then click Next and then Save. Like before, we can see the identity that has been created for the A2A agentic service along with an API key, and this time to create the badge we are prompted to provide a well-known URL for the A2A agent. Since we will be running the A2A agent locally, we cannot use the localhost URL as it won't be reachable from the Agent Identity Service. Instead, we can use the Agent Identity Service CLI to connect to the running Eightway Agent well-known URL and issue the badge, and then publish this to the Agent Identity Service via the Agentic Service API key that was created when we registered the Eightway Agent. First, let's start the Eightway Agent in the middle pane on the right-hand side of the terminal, and we can see that it is running on port 9091. Using the CLI, which we already have installed in this demo, we can issue a badge for this service by providing the A2A agent well-known URL and then copying in the API key from the Agent Identity Service UI. This will create the badge for the A2A agent by connecting to the well-known URL and then issue and publish the badge based on the agent card to the Agent Identity Service, and we can see it appear if we reopen the current Exchange Agent Service page. As before, we can see the different formats of the badge, including the credentials, JOSE, and claims via the UI. 
Finally, let's register the MCP server. Again, we click Add Agentic Service in the top right of the screen and select the MCP service type. We provide a name and description for the currency exchange MCP server, and then click Next and then Save. Like before, we can see the identity that has been created for the MCP server agentic service along with an API key. And this time to create the badge, we are prompted to provide a URL for the MCP server. Since we will also be running the MCP server locally, we cannot use the localhost URL as it won't be reachable from the agent identity service. And so we can use the agent identity service CLI again to connect to the running MCP server URL to issue the badge. And publish the badge to the agent identity service via the MCP server API key that was created when we registered the MCP server. Let's start the MCP server in the top pane on the right-hand side of the terminal, and we see that it is running on port 9090. Using the CLI, we can issue a badge for this service by providing the MCP server URL and then copying in the API key from the agent identity service UI. This will create the badge for the MCP server by connecting to the MCP server URL and then issue and publish the badge based on the available MCP tools to the agent identity service. We can see the badge appear if we reopen the currency exchange MCP server service page. As before, we see the different formats of the badge, including the credentials, JOSE, and claims via the UI. Each of the different agentic services have different claims in the badges. For example, in this MCP server badge, we can see the MCP server tools that are available and the parameters that can be used with each tool. This is important, as later on these tools will be used as part of policies to allow task-based access control for the agentic services. For now though, let's see how we can use these agentic services in practice in a financial assistant agent demo before we put policies in place. We already have the A2A agent and MCP server running, so we can now start the OASF agent in the bottom pane on the right-hand side of the terminal. Once it is running, we can open the OASF agent in a browser and we can see the financial assistant agent chat interface. We can ask this agent questions regarding currency exchange and financial calculations and it will respond with the relevant information via the MCP server and A2A agent. For example, we can ask what the exchange rate is between the Canadian dollar and the US dollar, and it will respond with the answer along with details of the MCP server tool that was used. This is a simple example of how an agent can use an MCP server to provide a financial assistance service, but it doesn't yet make use of a deeper integration with the agent identity service, which will allow us to put policies in place to control access to the different agentic services. In order to do this, we need to modify the OASF agent, the A2A agent, and the MCP server to use the Agent Identity Service SDK to authenticate and authorize access to the agentic services. Each of these agentic services has a different way of integrating with the Agent Identity Service, so let's consider the developer experience of each one in turn. First, let's look at the Financial Assistant OASF agent. Reviewing the sample scenario, we can see that the OASF agent should be able to access both the MCP server and the A2A agent, but it doesn't yet use the agent identity service to authenticate and authorize access to these services. Reviewing the documentation development guide, we want our OASF agent to use the A2A protocol to invoke the A2A agent, and we can see that we need to use the HTTPX auth class in order to integrate task-based access control. This class provides an easy way to authorize agentic services and manage access tokens. To add this to our agent, first we add the import at the top of the OASF agent code and then we can use the HTTPX auth class to authorize the agentic service to connect to the A2A agent. In this example, as the OASF agent can also call the MCP server directly, we also need to add an integration to the client. The MCP client session using HTTPX auth class uses the same HTTPX import as before and just needs to be added to the MCP server client auth argument once initialized. Finally, we add an environment variable for the agent identity service API key which we can copy from the Agent Identity Service UI. Next, we can look at how to integrate the A2A agent with the Agent Identity Service. The A2A agent needs to be able to handle authorization for incoming requests and use the MCP server to access the tools. For authorization, reviewing the documentation development guide, we can see that we need to use the A2A Starlet or FastAPI auth middleware. As before, we add the import for the SDK to the top of the A2A agent code and then we can use the auth middleware to add authentication to the A2A agent card. We then use the same approach with the MCP client session using HTTPX auth class as before, adding the import and auth argument to the MCP server client initialization. Finally, we add an environment variable for the agent identity service API key, which we can copy from the agent identity service UI. Lastly, we can look at how to integrate the MCP server with the agent identity service. 
Reviewing the sample scenario, we can see that the MCP server should be able to provide tools for the OASF agent and A2A agent, but it doesn't yet use the agent identity service to authenticate and authorize access to these tools. In this case, we want to authorize using the MCP Starlet or FastAPI Auth middleware. As before, we add the import for the SDK to the top of the MCP server code, and then we can add the Auth middleware to the FastAPI app and add the environment variable for the agent identity service API key which we can copy from the Agent Identity Service UI. With the integrations complete, we can now run the OASF agent, A2A agent, and MCP server again, and see how we can define policies to control access to the agentic services, which we call Task-Based Access Control, or TBAC. Reopening the OASF agent in a browser, and ask it again what the exchange rate is between the Canadian dollar and the US dollar. This time, we get a different response. The agent is unable to access the MCP server tool and receives a 403 forbidden error. This is because we have not yet defined any policies to allow the OASF agent to access the MCP server tools. In order to allow the agent to use the MCP server tools, we need to now navigate to the Agent Identity Service Policy section and quickly review the documentation on the task-based access control policies and step-by-step -step guides on how to create and manage policies. First, we give the policy a name and assign the policy to the OASF Financial Assistant Agentic Service and then add a description. Next, we add a rule to the policy. We give a name and description, and from the Tasks drop-down menu, we select the MCP server tools that the agent should have access to. We will update our demo scenario, and now make it so that the OASF agent is only allowed access to the Get Currency Exchange Rate tool, and not the Trade Currency Exchange tool. Later, we will give the A2A agent access to the Trade Currency Exchange, and not the Get Exchange Currency Rate tool, in order to see the difference in behavior. After reviewing the policy, we can click Save, and the policy is created. If we now return to the OASF agent in the browser and ask it again what the exchange rate is between the Canadian dollar and the US dollar, we can see that it is now able to access the MCP server tool and returns the exchange rate as expected because the policy we created allows it to access the Get Currency Exchange Rate tool. Looking again at our demo scenario, the OASF agent is able to also invoke the A2A agent via the A2A protocol, which can then access the Trade Currency Exchange tool from the MCP server. But we have not yet defined any policies to allow the OASF agent to access the A2A agent. So if we try to invoke the A2A agent from the OASF agent by asking to exchange 1,000 US dollars for Canadian dollars, we will again get a 403 forbidden error. Therefore, we need to create a new policy to allow the A2A agent to access the MCP server tools and update the existing policy to allow the OASF agent to access the A2A agent. We can do this by navigating back to the Agent Identity Service Policies section and creating a new policy. We click Add Policy, give the policy a name, assign the policy to the 8-way currency exchange agent agentic service, and then add a description. Next, we add a rule to the policy. We give a name and description, and from the Tasks drop-down menu, we select the Trade Currency Exchange tool and select Allow as the action. After reviewing the policy, we can click Save, and the policy is created. Finally, we can add a new rule to the OASF agent policy. Opening the existing policy that we created earlier for the OASF agent, we can add a new rule to allow the OASF agent to access the A2A agent. We give a name and description, and from the Tasks drop-down menu, we select the Invoke Currency Exchange Agent task and select Allow as the action. With the rule reviewed, we can click Save, and the policy is updated. If we now return to the OASF agent in the browser, and ask it again to exchange 1,000 US dollars to Canadian dollars, we can see that it is now able to access the MCP server tool via the A2A agent. The trade is successful, and we get the amount of Canadian dollars received and the exchange rate, along with the tool that was used by the OASF agent, in this case invoking the A2A agent to access the MCP server tool. We've already covered a lot in this demo, from connecting to a third-party identity provider, to registering agentic services, and integrating them with the Agent Identity Service SDK to allow task-based access control. But there is still more to explore, such as how to enable human-in-the-loop notifications and approvals. The Agent Identity Service provides a way to onboard mobile devices and send notifications to them, which can be used to approve or deny requests from agentic services based on policies that have been created. Let's see first how to onboard a mobile device. In the Agent Identity Service UI, we can navigate to the Settings menu and select Devices. Here we are given the option to register a new device to our account. Clicking Add Device displays a QR code that can be scanned with the camera on an Android or iOS device. Once scanned, the camera app gives the option to open the link in the browser, which brings us to the Agent Identity Service mobile app. We can add this app to our home screen. For example, in iOS, you can use Safari to add the page to your home screen. 
If we open the app, we can see that it is now registered to our account, and we can click the button to enable push notifications and receive human in the loop notifications from the agentic services for our approval. The device now appears in the Agent Identity Service UI, and we can see that it is registered and ready to receive notifications. In order to see these notifications in action in our demo setup, we need to modify the policies that we created earlier to include a human in the loop action. Each rule in the agent identity service policy can be configured to require human approval before the action is allowed. For example, we can modify the rule that allows the 8-way currency exchange agent to access the trade currency MCP server tool to require human approval by clicking the menu icon next to the rule and selecting edit, then ticking the needs approval checkbox and clicking save to update the rule and policy. Coming back to the OASF agent in the browser, we can now ask it to exchange 1,000 US dollars to Canadian dollars again. This time, we can see that once the 8-way agent tries to access the MCP server tool, a request is sent to our mobile device for approval, and we receive a notification from the app. If we open the notification, we can see the details of the request and have 60 seconds to allow or deny the request before it is automatically denied. Let's see what happens if we first deny the request. If we click deny, we can see that the OASF agent reports a 403 forbidden error, and the exchange is not completed as the 8-way agent could not access the MCP server tool. Now let's try approving the request. Making the same request to exchange 1,000 US dollars to Canadian dollars, we receive the notification on our mobile device again, and this time we click allow. We can see that the A2A agent is now able to access the MCP server tool, and the OASF agent reports that the exchange is successful. That concludes this walkthrough of the agent identity service. We have covered a lot, and thank you for taking the time to watch this demo video. We hope you found it useful and informative and that it has given you a good understanding of how to use the Agent Identity Service to create and manage secure identities for your AI agents and MCP servers, how to integrate existing applications with the Agent Identity Service, and how to enable human-in-the-loop notifications and approvals for task-based access control. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us via the Agent Identity Service documentation and support channels. Thank you again for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.